Good morning. This is morning with Micah. I'm having my little happy drink, my little mushroom coffee drink. And I wake up often with perfect ideas for videos or articles that I want to write. But I'm working six days a week and implementing, executing all of that has been very challenging. So maybe. I need to just sit with you in the mornings and get up a little earlier and share it instead of processing everything with only my partner and then living my life and holding things inside. So here I am. We'll see how long this lasts because we all know how life gets in the way over and over again. But today's topic is grief when you lose friends or outgrow them mostly we think of grief mostly as death uh, in the concept of someone actually dying a loved one a loved pet something like that <clears throat> but we also experience a lot of grief when there is a different type of death there's a lot of different types of death like ends of relationships romantic friendships and, you know, even losing jobs, divorce, all kinds of things can trigger grief within us. And we all handle grief differently, depending on what it is we're losing or whom. And I think that one of the things that's holding me back the most, and I'm going to try not to get emotional talking about this, but it's holding on to resentment maybe and anger as part of my grief process because you feel really alone when you work on healing yourself. When you do a lot of your own shadow work and you work on healing trauma, <clears throat> one of the goals of healing trauma is to experience joy. That's kind of the main point. And I'm talking healthy joy. Unhealthy joy is imbalanced and it's actually bad for the heart because every emotion in imbalance can hurt a different organ. And joy is directly related to the heart. So if we're not experiencing enough, we have heart issues. And I've always had heart issues, especially since my son was born. And um, But if we experience too much joy, you know, the people that seem imbalanced where they're almost always happy and positive where they don't allow themselves to experience other emotions. That's the imbalance of joy also, which is also hard on the heart. We need to know contentment. I think that's more of a goal than happiness. But, you know, anger and resentment, those affect different organs, such as the liver is definitely in anger because that's where we hold our heat. It's really toxic for the, li the liver. And as you go through changes in your life, especially as a woman, you have the liver is more responsible for things. So it has a harder time with emotions. Anything that releases cortisol and stress. So I think that when we are at certain points in our life, science proves that we attract, like attracts like. Our nervous system is at a certain space and we find someone else that has a similar wound. And we're not thinking about this intellectually. This is something our bodies feel drawn to. I have literally felt other people that resonate with my nervous system where I'm at, at different places in my life, in those moments. We were at the same space of woundedness. And that woundedness can attract you to different people, friends, lovers, etc. And you would think that it would keep you connected forever. <sighs> um, trauma bond problems. <laughs> 
Because what happens is one or both of you are going to work on inevitably healing that. And if one or both of you do not, you just kind of end up wallowing and there's only a downward spiral, spiral from there. So sometimes when you're in it, it feels like it's even, it feels like you're kind of one person might be growing out of it while the other person stays the same. But really, there's nowhere to go but down. Because what happens is, even if you don't recognize it psychologically, it's physically killing you. Different emotions and staying in a certain space, a certain vibration, not just energetically, but your nervous system can only handle so much. And it starts breaking down organs. And it's always interesting if you look up like, if you start having a health condition and you look up what organ is associated with an, that health issue, or if you're having a physical pain and where in the body that shows up, your body is telling you what you need to heal emotionally. Obviously, if a physical thing happens, then that can affect you emotionally too. If you're having a physical problem and it can be cyclical, sometimes it's a chicken or egg situation where I don't know what how it started, but you know you have work to do to heal it if you don't want to get cancer or heart disease or other issues with your organs and nervous system, you know, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's. They're finding all kinds of ways to, heat, to prevent those that are related to our gut health, which is related to our cortisol levels, stress, and other things, which I can do other videos about. But the point of this video is, and I do have one, it's been hard for me to deal with the grief of losing people that I believed loved me. That's been really hard because these people would have been there for me any time when I was in any kind of a crisis. But now that I am in a healthy relationship, regardless of how happy I am with other aspects of my life, just because you finally have done the work on yourself and you've found someone to meet the vibration where you're at as far as a romantic relationship is concerned. And you, because I was single for four years before I got together with Jim, my now fiance slash partner, life partner. And there's only so much work you can do alone uh, to heal. There's at some point where you need other people to reflect things back to you. A lot of people want to stay single and alone. Mainly, I mean, obviously it's a choice. And with some people that's fine and they've done their work and good for them. But I'm talking about the people like me. I was a recovering, sorry, love addict. And I needed at some point to know what a healthy relationship was like. That was important for me. And there was only one way to do that, and that was to be in a healthy relationship, <laughs> but to heal myself first. And then I started to get stuck in my own comfort of being alone and single, and I was too comfortable. And then when somebody comes along and rocks your world a little bit, usually it's so that you can grow and bloom and hit another level in life. And I have hit another level in life, um, but I don't have anyone to share it with anymore, friends that I thought I could. I can't share it with because those people want to stay in a certain vibration. And it reminds me of a George Bernard Shaw quote that I'm going to not say the whole thing because I'll post it in my description. But basically, he talks about there is the true joy of life to be used by a purpose recognized by yourself as a mighty one, to be thoroughly worn out before being thrown on the scrap heap. To be a force of nature instead of a feverish, selfish little clod of ailments and grievances, complaining that life will not devote itself to make you happy. There's more, but I'll share that later. That's my thing, though, and that's what I woke up feeling. I cannot be a selfish little clod of ailments and grievances, complaining about life, not giving me what I want. If who wants to give to somebody who complains all the time, it's so toxic and it always comes from a space of lack. 
Do I have ailments? Am I going to talk about them in future videos? Yes, I am. Yes, we all have things we have challenges, but there's a fine line between acknowledging thing, where you have been wronged, what you are suffering or struggling with, and how to constructively approach it and navigate around it as opposed to wallowing. And that line is very fine because I'm very good wallower and I can wallow with the best of them. But I actively try to hold myself accountable and pull myself out of those moments because I don't want to get diseases as I get older. I don't want to have strokes. I don't want to family follow my family's lineage in unhealthy ways. I want to learn from them. And one more thing that <laughs> there are a couple of things that came up when I searched for this quote. Byron Katie said, complaining does not work as a strategy. So basically it's serving some purpose. And this will go into other videos I want to make about the shadow and unmet needs. It's meeting some need or it used to at some point, but it no longer works when these things no longer work or give you what you need. It's time to recognize that and get a new strategy. And Elizabeth Gilbert had said once, I've never seen any life transformation that didn't begin with the person in question finally getting sick of their own BS to some eyes. And that's where I would get. I would get, I'm tired of hearing myself talk about this person. This person that I was obsessed with and in love with for so long, who will only communicate with me if they think they can get what they physically want from me. But otherwise, they have no use for me. They're not interested in my life. They're not interested in me. They don't want to get close emotionally or at all vulnerable, regardless of how long we've known each other. That's all irrelevant. The only time there's any interest is if there's some kind of physical gratification out of our experience. Otherwise, I'm useless. I am not even a blip on their radar. And close friends who, you know, I got sick of hearing myself complaining or saying the same things over and over again, wallowing. And I don't, and I get to a point where I, I can't hear other people say the same thing. I can't hear other people play victim. Have I been victimized? Have I been abused? Have I gone through extensive trauma? Yes, check, check. And, but that's not me now. Now I'm not being victimized until I pull myself back into that space. Do old triggers and old things come up almost daily? Of course they do. They always will. But does that have a hold over my choices now? How I react? What I do with my life? What decisions I make? I refuse because then I'm still empowering the situation or the person that initially did that abuse. Now I've become my own abuser because I'm no longer a victim. I'm not being victimized. So if I'm not currently being victimized, then there is no current perpetrator other than myself. Does that mean that everybody who has been victimized and traumatized doesn't have a right to seek justice from a perpetrator? Of course not. I just am talking about my own personal accountability and how much I allow them to continue to victimize me. That's it. And that's my choice in my world. And other people choose to be clods of, what did he say? Grievances and ailments. And I can't, I can't be around that anymore. And then when I want to try to connect with people on any level, I just hear complaints and grievances. And so I've been experiencing a lot of grief and grief is its own thing and it comes in waves. And there are days when I don't think about it. And there are other days like today where I wake up and I'm just like, I miss having somebody that I can share the joyful things in my life with. I miss somebody having, having someone in my life that can be happy for me, and feel that pain with me at the same time where we can vent and complain and get things off of our chest in a productive way to release it so that we can move forward 
as opposed to pulling old things back into the situation. And when old things come up, because they do, we can still constructively have a conversation around, this is how it made me feel, and I don't want to feel this anymore. What can I do to reframe it? I like productive relationships. And they're not always perfect. And we do have a right to complain and vent and get things out. Because if that sits in us, it decays. But there's always got to be a limit. You always have to know your own boundary, your body's boundary. And uh, when you hit yours with yourself and you see other people not respecting their own boundaries within themselves, I ca I can't. It's It hurts. It hurts me. And I know this comes from a place of love because grief is really love that can't be expressed anymore, right? So the love is still always there, but they aren't willing to receive it because they want to stay in pain or they want to keep an agenda that would only be harmful for you. And it's hard. And the more work you do, the more you start noticing this. And all you can do is hope that people that can meet your newer healthier vibration, your intent, at the very least, enter your life. So to that, I have to go to work now. So I'm going to enjoy my little mushroom coffee, and I hope you have a wonderful day.